Hello and welcome to Bad Wolf Girl Says the Nets, episode 158. I'm laughing because I just started talking and it's been dead silent as I set up and Gypsy just jumped. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> 158. My name is Meg and I will be your host. You're joining me here in a Frederick day. It is uh, Friday the 6th and it's pretty warm. It's 88 already. So we have been out to play once and we will go again after I get done this podcast. Um, I am actually going to split this podcast into two. So the first part of it is going to be all the FOs and then the next part of it is going to be whips and works that are coming and chatter. Um, uh, I am currently pregnant, so uh, a lot of my stuff is baby stuff at the moment. Um, and I will talk about the yarn, I'll talk about the knitting, I'll talk about construction, and then I will leave all of the actual like family stuff to the end of the podcast. If it's not your jam triggering anything, I get it, it's fine. Um, so that'll be in part two at the end in chatter. So this whole thing is just going to be like I call it the meat of the episode. It's going to be the good stuff. So I'm going to go right in to um, FOs for this. Uh, I do have a knit along going on right now. It's our Bad Wolf Girl Christmas in July 5. If you would like to participate, please just use the hashtag on Instagram. Tag me in it. Tag me in the photo. Send it to me. Put it to your story. Do something. And um, if I like it or reshare it, then you know I've seen it and that I can see it and that you are uh, entered for the contest. I do have three prizes that will be physical being mailed out, all Christmas themed. And I am thinking of giving uh, probably eight patterns away, um, which will be winner's choice, uh, anything from my shop. So uh, everything looks good there and that's all the admin. So let's hop right in to finished objects. Um, so I have been kind of on a uh, small item knitting kick. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with like tin can neck knits. Um, I've been going a little bit rogue and, uh, you know, I would start with one of those patterns and then I would almost completely, <laughs> completely go in a different direction with it, um, which is fine. But uh, I wanted to share with you some new things. Knit Picks is currently carrying a speckled Brava yarn. If you haven't seen it yet, um, Brava is great. It's a worsted weight, so it doesn't come in the sport and it doesn't come in the bulky. Right now it's only in worsted, which gives you about 218 yards per 100 grams. Um, I picked Cake Pop Speckle, I think it's called. Confetti Pop Speckle? No, I think it's Cake Pop Speckle. And um, that is this lovely, it's a rainbow, but I don't think it looks too much like a rainbow, uh, and which is what I'm really enjoying out of all of this, these brights, oh my goodness. The speckles laid really nicely. I don't think they pool weirdly. I did not alternate for anything. I just knit from, um, I used two balls and I made about a two year, up to two year size. So the hanger that I'm using is a 24 month hanger. Uh, so I'm going off of the clothes that fit 24 months. So I have a 24 month t-shirt on a 24 month hanger. And then I put, I put the garments on said hanger and um, I'm using this sort of like a, um, what do you call it, mannequin, like a mannequin bust, sort of how I'm going with it. So um, this little adorableness, oh my goodness, is made with Cake Pop Speckle and Solstice from Brava. I um, was gonna do a brighter blue with this. I was gonna do Celestial, which is more like that blue, um, but I chose not to, decided not to. And I'm really happy with how the dark looks, really. I think it looks really, really good. Um, I did pockets, if you can see them. I think you can almost see them. They're almost like hidden pockets because they blend from further away. They're kind of blending into the piece, but they, they do have pockets that are um, pretty much like the underside of my fingers. I can fit into said pocket. So it's a nice, nice little size pocket. And if I flip it open like this, you can see I've sewn it down on the inside so that it works. 
I've knit the sleeves um, to the larger size. So I think two years was the highest size. This is, this is almost from the vertebrae pattern, the newborn vertebrae sweater, the vertebrae sweater, the adult vertebrae sweater. So I went with the, the middle one. It's a paid for pattern. Uh, the newborn I believe is free. Um, but I kind of went off the numbers of the, the paid for vertebrae sweater. And then instead of, I think you only have like four stitches or something um, on the newborn, like it's really tiny for your fronts. So they're very open. I wanted this a little bit more closed, um, but also not completely zipped. Um, I mean, I could, I could, I could throw a button or a, a tie or a snap in there, like maybe low like a low snap just to keep it on the body. Um, but I think this is one of those like, I'll solve it when the time comes problems. I don't know if I'll, I'll like it or he'll like it uh, open like that. So I did a garter ridge instead of the called for knit one, pearl one, knit two, pearl two, ribbing. That's the word I wanted, <laughs> ribbing. Um, I did do one by one ribbing on the cuff and I do a sewn tubular bind off so that it gets this really nice kind of like rolled over edge. I um, went ahead and did a garter bottom as well so that the button band, button band, the band, the collar band and the um, front pieces, the front bands uh, would match. Um, what else, what else, what else? I really enjoyed making it. It was very easy. Um, I feel like this has not been blocked yet, which is why I think that these fronts are kind of riding up a little bit. I think if I could just wash it and pin it, I think it would be fine. And then of course it's made to be beat up because it's Brava, so that's machine washable. It's, you know, dryer safe, it's soft material, they're fun colors. So. I had to know what was up when uh, Brava released Speckles. So I went ahead and I got, I got this one. I got one with like dark blues and light blues. I got um, white and blacks, like a, like a salt and pepper sort of speckle. So I'm very excited uh, to continue trying these out. So yes, this is one of my first and very excited. I um, think it turned out really, really cute and I would definitely make it for friends. From there, I was working on this gorgeousness, which is a mix of um, Gabby and Tristan's yarn. So that is Once Upon a Corgi, uh, who is now Plies, Plies and Hellhounds. I think I got that right. Plies and Hellhounds, um, which I'm not used to the new name and that's, that's okay, I'll get there. Um, so she rebranded recently, loving the moody vibes. Uh, so. She, this was a skein that I, when she came and stayed with me, she stayed in my apartment um, before we got this house, the year before COVID. And um, this was a skein she gifted me to thank for, you know, hosting her, which was a joy and not an issue. Uh, and then the other one that it's held with, so it's fingering weight held double. And the other fingering weight one that I held with it is Tristan's yarn, who is Dragon Horde yarn. And she had a pumpkin color from two years ago. Um, and I recently got her new color. It's called Slutty Pumpkin for this year. Stunning. And I cannot wait. I think I want to make, and I kind of want to make socks, but then I also kind of, kind of want to make like a hat or something so that I can match little man over here. Mm, so torn. Anyway. So this is, um, it's a little bit more open than the last one. If you can tell, there is less on the front. It's also a nine to 12 month size rather than a 24 month size. But you can see on the hanger, doesn't look that bad. Um, and this has also not been blocked. So um, stands to reason that there should be growing room. I also used Cordial, Cordial from Knit Picks Brava Sport in there. This is what I used for Patrick's Christmas sweater, the dinosaur one. Um, if you've been around, then you'll know what I'm talking about on that. If not, have fun doing a little deep dive in my, <laughs> in my Instagram. Uh, links will all be down below, by the way. So, um, what else? I did the sleeves to the, 
like 12 month size, not the 24 months. So um, the only thing that I might have an issue with is that the sleeves get a little bit short before the rest of the sweater, um, in which case I could always add on I do still have the two yarns that I used and I am going to keep them aside in what I'm calling the baby box. So I'm just saving all the yarn that I want to use for scrap projects, small socks, little things, anything like that. So I think that their yarns together played so gorgeous. One is tweed, one is not. I think that the not tweed really toned down the tweed, which was great because I wasn't really looking for tweed. Um, but the oranges are so beautiful. Oh, this is just the perfect fall sweater. Um, we're uh, expecting in December, so uh, baby would be like nine, 10, 11 months during fall. And um, that, would, that, would, that would put them right in the size. So I'm hoping that this will get um, used for the first fall when he's here. And oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. So I am I am going to make a hat, I think, out of these two so that I can match. And then I was going to um, do something like a trim with maroon. But then uh, I was able to buy a really fun kind of like burgundy, warm pink sort of pom-pom off of Tristan. And um, she has pom-poms on her website as well. So uh, I was able to buy that and I think it'll be just enough, like not matchy-matchy, but just it'll go with it. It'll give it that look that I was looking for. I did this podcast already. I talked for 80 minutes <laughs> between everything that I've got going on here. 80 minutes and I lost the whole darn thing and I was very upset, but I'm bringing this up because I talked about this already. <laughs> and, and everything that I was saying I was going to do last time, I did. So now you get to share in that. But yes, so I absolutely love it. I highly recommend holding fingering weight double. It creates a very, um, I guess, airy fabric is the best I can say. Like it has a nice sort of breathability to it. Um, and it's not as thick as like a Brava worsted um, because this creates more of a DK sort of vibe. I'm. I'm obsessed with it. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's so fun. Um, from there, speaking of things that I did not have last time that I pretty much cast on after I stopped podcasting, uh, there are two things. I, um, I worked up this little guy. All right, this is the two to four year size measurements in both a tin cans, tin can knits, and knitting expat patterns, the, the sizes that they give for two to four, three to four, two to three, that like 22, 23 inch type of um, chest, uh, this lines up with those. And as you can see, it fits really nice on my 24 month hanger. So um, with room to go. So this is how much it's over on this side and that's how much it's over on this side so i'm looking at a two to four year size i always think that it's better to knit a little bit larger you could put a big sweater on a small body but not small sweater on a big body and um i'm obsessed i'm obsessed again this is a new pattern that i'll be coming out with um for the keen eye amongst you, you might sort of recognize the pattern. Uh, this is the collar that I did for the um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg collar on my black sweater, which I podcasted with last time. I haven't done any more work on it, so I did not bring it down this time. Plus I have this to show. So um, I kind of didn't even worry about it, but <clears throat> I took the structure of the color work that I had for that in black and white and I applied color to it and I am so in love. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what my naming structure, what, <clears throat> what the naming is going to be. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the um, RBG mini uh, and of course like include ideas and color ideas and um, color contrast that might work with that or if I want to just completely 
kind of keep our, the, the peplum separate, which I think I might. I'll do the peplum separate. And the mini itself, obviously you can just do it in black and white. It will yield that feeling, um, but just having a different name for it. So I'm, I'm working through it. Um, let me muddle. Let me muddle a little bit longer. Don't worry about a name, but it is a thing that is going to happen. And I am so excited. So in here I used, um, I think it's Marina from, so these are all nitpicks. Marina, Tide Pool and Mint. So Mint is the lightest one. I think Tide Pool is this like kind of tealy green and then Marina is the darker one. And then uh, there are dots that go in the pattern here that um, I missed while I was knitting. I, I've since restructured the pattern to include them, that there should be, there should be dots in here. You can do them any color you want, but um, I probably would have done them in either mint or the green. The mint or the green, I would have done them in. Um, I've done long sleeves on this. I've knit it maybe 10 inches long or so. For the sleeves and I did a one by one. The body is navy in Knit Picks Mighty Stitch, um, which is an 80-20 blend. So this is that, well, you wouldn't know because the podcast is gone. This is that one I was talking about last time that is just feels like kittens. My um, llama sweater, my, my llama sweater, the pink one, is knit out of the Mighty Stitch and Patrick's um, original Christmas sweater with the snowflakes, the um, frozen fractal band that I put on there. Um, his is also this, so it'll match, but oh my word, I'm so in love. It's a little bit longer than the t-shirt as you can see. Um, and I figured that would be better so that, you know, like while we're walking around, bending over, picking stuff up, like wouldn't constantly be like having cold uh on the back you know kind of thing like do 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 um but i'm just this this went down in like five days because the color work i just one night ate it all up so good um it was so so fun and all of these colors are actually the sweater that i knit my grandmother so i thought that that was a, a sweet memory to kind of knit into this um that Camaro sweater that I made her. So, loving it, loving it, two to four year size. And I, I really think I got the whole thing done in a week. I think I podcasted last Thursday and today is Friday. And this has been done for at least two days, I think. So, get that closer again for you. Ooh, so excited, I'm loving it. Um, so I'd like to, I'd like to surprise my neighbor with one, Paisley. I am just trying to figure out like what colors. I've got some really pretty blush pinks and I thought maybe I would mix it with like gold or cream, purple, and maybe like a soft orange, like a creamsicle, just to give it like a totally different feel. And I'd love to see how that came out or like a red. Like maybe, maybe a fuchsia purple, like a fuchsia purple. Oh yeah, I'm gonna feel around for that. So we're gonna see, but um, I'm just really in a mood to, to try it again. And that, that was a, a larger size. Um, and this one's only two and she's tiny. So I think if I make a two, um, two to three, it should be fine. Now, let's see if I can get this on without pulling anything weird. This guy, this is one that I kind of went rogue on. Um, I sort of knit, I sort of knit a mini lumberjack. Now, if you wanted to kind of copy it, I think the vest that Tin Can Knits does would probably work if you had my frozen fractal pattern and that vest i think you could probably make make your own like this um so this is i keep calling it a mini snowflake um 
but it, it isn't a pattern that I was thinking of releasing because the charts are already up. Um, there's multiple patterns that you can get them with. Like I have hats and cowls and all this stuff. So um, really uh, what I did was I knit the, my Simply Cozy sweater with smaller numbers. So I start, you know, like the construction is you kind of start here, you go up and over the shoulders, you join in the round, you knit down, take it off, do your sleeves. So that's kind of how the Simply Cozy, my Simply Cozy sweater is knit. Um, so basically that's kind of what I did. I ended up, this did not have sleeves last time that I podcasted. So um, I did end up doing a short row sleeve cap just like here you can see yeah, I think you can see fine and it worked out really nice it has a nice little folded over collar there you go. I don't want to get too close folded over collar and I've tacked it down in the back I did a one by one collar it's um a little bit stretched because I don't think I picked up enough stitches I normally like slip the first and then knit to the end in my knitting and that actually skips every other row when you're picking them back up which normally for sleeves is fine but for necklines i've noticed it gets a little tight for guys so learning experience um i just need to pick up a few more i think maybe not double but maybe like a third more would be good um Need a little things. So this looks just like my husband's and it melts my little heart because <laughs> it's tiny. It's very cute. Um, once again, you can see it fits barely on a 24 month size. This has not been blocked. Might have some growing room in there. And then the uh, snowflakes are from my frozen fractal pattern, which is normally up here around the yoke. Um, so excited. One by one rib, tubular bind off on the cuff. I might have gone down a little bit, a little bit too much on the cuff. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I did or not. I really don't know what baby wrists look like. So we shall see. But oh, my obsession is deep. I love how it came out. And again, I knit it a little bit big. So it's you're kind of squeezing into it at 24 months, but um, 12 months will be just fine. And then the whole winter season after that. So exciting. Oh, this little guy. Oh, I'm so excited. So this turned out absolutely adorable. Um, and these are the, this is the sweater. Whoa, it's the sweater pile I got going on so far. Falling over. And then, okay, so that now I, I put this down and you'll see that again in part two. Um, the other night I was, well, as I was cleaning out down here, we got a new desk. It's gorgeous. Um, but before we did this, everything had to be emptied from the wall, from everywhere. And everything got dumped into our dining room. It's all my stuff and I feel bad about it. So I was trying to you know, organized, clean. I've got two giant bags and I'm putting up for D-Stash um, because I could really use the money for baby and I really want them to have a second life. I don't want them to just sit here, you know, if they're not gonna get used and you could use them and anyway. So I'm gonna be having that going on. Um, but as I was going through, I found one of those big Bernat like fuzzy yarn balls that just, you know, like bulky, 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 bulky yarn. So it kind of almost knits up into like a camo sort of pattern. It's, this is just single crochet and it has holes in it. Not sure how much you can see the holes, but um, because the single crochet is not totally, you know, like knitting, you can get a lot of holes in there. So there's still breathing room. Um, it's not very, very big. It's a little bit too big for the screen, but it's not very, very big. And I crocheted this up in one day. 
Um, I started it in the morning and I just worked on it throughout the day. And now I have a baby blanket. So one more ball out of my stash, one more gift net done type of thing. Like very happy with that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so here for it. Oh, my hair is crocheted into it. Oh, turned out great. So this is going to be um, just like a throw down and put baby on top type of blanket. So I have that one done. I finally got done Donato Bear. This is the um, Winnie the Pooh bear uh, theme with Donato Bear pattern. So I did yellow, red, yellow, just to give it that little look. Finally got the ears done. I had Pinky promised I would, and I did. He turned out really, really cute. And I'm thrilled to have him now because I was so tired of just looking at him without ears and being like, oh, I don't want to do that. Now it's done. So two crochet items, very pleased. Um, I'm drinking iced coffee. It's decaf pike place from Starbucks. I found it at the grocery store yesterday. It's a little, like the, the flavor's stronger than I'm used to um, than the, the bones coffee. And um, I did order a bag of decaf from bones. I don't know if anyone saw that. My nail got stuck on my necklace. I have to redo them. They're lifting really badly, like really, really badly. Like this thumb is pretty much gone. Um, maybe I'll do that today. Maybe I'll do that today. 203. I might be able to get it done. Anyway, I had words and they're gone. <laughs> Dang it. Coffee. Uh, Bones Coffee. I ordered the... Highland Grog the other day, which sounded so good. So I decided to do it. And um, so that came in. So I'll have that soon. As far as, don't go down there. As far as finished objects go, one of the first things I made was some well, yarn habits. Yarn. Uh, this is their DK base. This is from... 27, 18, 2018. And um, I've gone ahead, if you can see the little plastic bits in there, um, the thing that is holding them up right now is the inserts that you get when you buy certain pairs of baby shoes and socks. Uh, so I have been just using that little, that little insert to create like a sock foot thing. Um, and that's how I knew where to put a heel. So these are newborn size, and I just did a little short row heel, and I started one by one ribbing about three rows above the short row heel. Cast on like six for the toe, and just increased until it fit nicely inside. And um, you can kind of see how that came out. And it's super cute. And the yarn is super cute. And this was all I had left of this yarn. So I was able, I was able to like whip up these cute little booties. And I know that uh, socks this small are not practical because they grow so fast, but um, I think that I might turn them into tree ornaments afterwards. Um, so I am, I'm not fussed. I, I kind of made them as dual purpose, but I'm super duper loving them. So cute. So I have these done. I got a hoe. <laughs> I have a hoe. Um, I'm almost done the other sock. I think I'll take it to dinner tonight and I'll work on it so it can be done. Um, this is, I think I had trouble last time and I was looking through things and I, Started finding her yarn, Holly Press Fibers. I'm pretty sure that this is her yarn. Um, so I used um, Hunter Green and the, I think, Holly Press Fiber Stripes to make these elf socks, which I'm obsessed with. They're so cute. These are mine, and these are my Christmas socks this year. So for my Christmas in July, Cal, I have socks. That's what I did. And then 
These were from ages ago. I knit a really long tube out of this cake and I was able to insert my heels, toes, and cuffs in. So these are, um, I think it's called Candlelight from the Yarn Jar. And very, very pretty. Um, super obsessed with these stripes. You can see they sort of match, but don't. They just kind of like, I have them breaking the dark and light bits up together. And that, that makes them look like they match, but they actually go in opposite directions. Um, and I don't think I meant don't think I meant to do that, but it's fine. It will not bother me. I did an afterthought heel. I used navy from Knit Pick Stroll and um, super, super pleased with them. So these were on the needles for a while. I'm so happy to have them off. Um, so I have all those. And then, because <laughs> I love socks, um, I, was, I was working with my Christmas yarn and uh, I, took what I needed for the second and I realized that I had a tube that was like 15 stripes long and I was like well I don't want to throw it out it seems like a lot to throw out um you know I don't mind if it's just nothing but this was like like it, it went all the way down my wrist here it was a long tube so I counted it out divided it in half and I knit baby socks out of it so I have a little pair of elf socks to go with mine. So I'm so excited. I used the same green Hunter, which is uh, from Knit Pick Stroll. And I made my own, <laughs> I made my own little blockers because I could not figure out where I could find something to the size that I wanted. So um, this is like a piece of, oh, what's, what's, what do you, what do you put cereal boxes? What would you say that is? Pressed? something, I don't know, whatever that is, whatever that material is, I'm blanking. Um, I laid it down, I traced the sock, and then I cut it out. I have my own blockers. Uh, and I've been enjoying them very much. I think I'll make another set because um, I got a little carried away. So this is the first pair, and um, these are our nine to 12 month size. Um, these are uh, 12 to 24 month size and they are made from Mason Creation yarns and pickle juice from Knit Picks. And these have been getting a lot of love on the internets. And I understand why, because I'm obsessed with them. They're so sweet. They're so cute. They're a bit longer. I put the heel, um, you know, longer. For the measuring uh so this should fit like two to three and this will fit like from like one to two um i'm just oh my gosh this little this little second oh i absolutely need a pair in these colors because they're so pretty i had a lot of fun and so this is a 20 gram mini actually and um I was like, oh, I have a lot of 20 gram minis, like either that have been gifted or like that I've saved or are left over. So um, yeah, I I am absolutely going to be using up my minis and making, making some more socks that'll, you know. I know I put heels in, I debated not doing it. So let's talk about one that I didn't. Um, the last finished object that I have is the Fred and George colorway from Nomadic Yarns. Um, she has since been renaming her colorways and you might find some similar yarn under a different name. And I don't know what that would be at the moment. Um, so, so it's like kind of hard to do. I didn't put a heel in. I didn't know where, cause I didn't know what size I wanted to make. Cause I didn't know how much I could get out of one ball. Um, this was all happening the last podcast because it wasn't, I think I was only maybe up to the heel or a little bit higher. I didn't know how much, like how tall I was going to be able to go. And this still has like a good amount of, amount of width room. 
like this way. So um, I think I'm gonna leave these without heels at the moment. The second one is gonna get a green top and a green toe so that they kind of go together, but not because they're twins. Um, and I thought that was really fun. Uh, and I've been, been having fun with it. So I'll just hold it still for a sec. Um, I picked the blue out of stash and it matches with that stripe pretty closely. I was very happy with that. My little bug wants to go out. Let's let her know. Okay, I let the dog out. Um, so yeah, I it's 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 very hard to kind of show it even on a blocker because it gets so lumpy here, and I don't know if that's just gonna drive me mad or if he's not gonna care. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. These haven't been blocked. Um, I feel like they might soften a little bit. This is the sport base, and it's just a little bit thicker and a little bit tougher. Is she barking for me or barking at somebody else? I can't tell. Um, but I'm very pleased with them. Uh, 20 stitches around on a 1.5. And yeah, they're just kind of big. So this is this is almost like next, next size up. So if I leave them as tube socks, I can start them early. Excuse me. I can start them early and then, um, you know, just move where the heel will go is as he pulls it up. Um, so we're just we're just gonna play around with this pair and see what happens. So I have a second sock to do. Again, I have to just cast it on. Um, last week, I was all about the socks. I knit this pair, I knit this pair, I started this pair all in a row. And then I got distracted by the sweater and, um, and off I go. So uh, this, this pair, has been um, on the back burner. If I were to put a heel in, I'd probably put it on that blue stripe. If I were, because that would make it about as long as it is tall. And that's how I typically knit socks. So that would be, um, let's see if I have a little measuring in here somewhere. Oh, I bought a sock ruler from the sock ruler and it's hard plastic. Um, so that would be about four and a half, four and three quarters, about four and three quarters plus a heel that's five and three quarters. That would put, that would, that would, that would be a, like a little boy sock not a toddler sock anymore that would be in the junior sizes so um that heel would i mean it would last a while but getting to it might take a while and then what if he just zips right past that i don't know uh, i don't know what i don't know um the whole sock whole socks about nine three quarters actually yeah so it's about half um but i'm so obsessed, so obsessed. does it fit in here oh my gosh it does it does look at it <laughs> yeah so this is just gonna it's it just has a lot of longevity i don't know i don't know how to handle it i don't know how to handle it i don't know what to do with it um so we're just gonna we're just gonna be a play around and see uh but these socks made me you know inspired if i if i don't knit the sweater for my neighbor um which we'll just see how i'm how I wax and wane with that one, but I have thought about knitting her a nice little pair of stripy socks. I thought that that would be super fun. I think her feet would be about this size, I have to ask, but I think, I think she's about this size. And these knit up so quickly, 20 grams. So 10 grams of purple on each, plus I had a little bit of lefters. I probably have one gram or two grams left over in the end, I could have gone a little longer. And then um, the toes, I did a little bit taller. I think I did a whole inch on the toes for that. I'm in, I'm in love. I'm in love with little, little Bubba sock things. Um, okay, so I think that's everything for the finished object podcast. I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, reminding you to take it one cup at a time, no matter how large that cup may be. And I will see you soon. Bye.